Today I'm going to review the Trangia alcohol stove. Neat little stove here, nice and compact, a lot of good uses, and it's got its flaws too. We're going to go over some of them today. These things are readily available online in outdoor stores. They cost between $10 and $15. You can get them on Amazon, you can buy them at REI, you can get them a number of places. They're very durable. This looks to be made of like a brass material. And it wears nice over time, gets a little patina on it, looks nice. It's compact, it's cheap, and it gets the job done. This stove is about two inches across, an inch and a half tall. And let's take a look and see what it weighs here. 3.88 ounces, so quite light. Maybe not as light as a pocket rocket or something like that, but light nonetheless. Now let's take and fill it with fuel. Now I'm using 91% alcohol. Actually, the other 9% is water. This is a rubbing alcohol or a methyl alcohol, readily available at any grocery store or Walgreens or Walmart, and it's about $1.48 a quart. This stuff is dirt cheap. You can go out and buy heat. You can buy all sorts of denatured alcohol and whatnot, but they really don't work any better than this. I've seen other people try these. And you may boil a couple of cups of water with uh, a different type or more expensive type of alcohol and it'd be just a few seconds faster. Nothing significant. $1.48 a quart, folks. So let's fill this stove up. Now, you only want to get this stove about three quarters full or to the level of this surface here. You don't want to overfill it. There actually needs to be some gas flow through here once the alcohol gets hot and starts to heat the stove, it'll actually heat the alcohol and you'll actually see flames come out of these little holes here. That means that we're achieving gasification of the fuel and it'll burn hotter and much more rapidly. So I'm gonna put this lid back on here and we're gonna weigh this with fuel, with the lid on top and the simmer ring. We'll talk about that in a second. And it's now 6.7 ounces. Now remember the stove was 3.88 ounces. So you've got roughly 2.8 ounces of alcohol in the stove. Now let's look at the stove and its components. We've got what's known as a simmer ring. Now this is pretty handy, but you want to find a way to loosen this ring up here. If you slide this top over, it'll cut off the airflow to the stove and it will cut down the intensity of the heat and the level of the flame. It'll burn longer, you'll have a lower temperature, and you can simmer. The problem is, once it's on the stove and you try to move the ring around, it can be a little tough to move when the stove is hot or you have a windbreak around it or some sort of wind guard. So I don't really normally use this, although you certainly can. You may want to bend it up and get it a little bit loose. I've had this stove for about a year and I don't really use it, so I haven't really broken it in or gotten it easier to use, but I would highly recommend that you do that. Next, we have the lid here and it's got some warnings on it of what to do and what not to do. First thing, you don't ever want to pour alcohol into a hot stove and you don't want to overfill it. Now, alcohol can burn virtually without a flame and you need to be very careful. Once you think you've gotten this thing lit or not lit, you want to hold your hand over it and feel for heat. I've seen too many people assume that a stove isn't lit and go pick it up and dump it over and now you've got flaming alcohol everywhere now, when you want to shut this stove off, take the lid, plop it on, it'll extinguish itself within a matter of seconds, if not instantly. Now, we're going to heat two cups of water, bring it to a boil, see how long it takes, and we're going to calculate how much alcohol it uses. Now, why two cups of water? Well, that's two cups of coffee, or in my case, one big cup of coffee, or about enough water to hydrate some dehydrated soup, or a dehydrated meal. First thing we'll do is take off the simmer ring and unscrew the top or the lid off of the stove. You'll notice there's a rubber O-ring style gasket in here which prevents it from leaking. These stoves really are pretty high quality. Occasionally, you'll get one that might leak, just send it back, but 99% of the time, they work right out of the box and they're really great. To test the Trangia stove, we need a wind guard, 
which will also serve as a pot stand. This is also made by Trangia. The nice thing about this is, you see it's got holes on one side, nothing on the other, and it fits with the Trangia kit. It nests, and what we're gonna do is rotate this uh, to keep the wind from blowing the flame down, and then we'll also heat our water on top of that. I've also got a 600 milliliter titanium cup. Today it's about 74 degrees out, so the water should be about the same temperature. We're gonna get two cups in there. That should be right at two cups. So the way I'm gonna get my fire started today is with a ferrocium rod and my Benchmade 162 knife. I love this knife. It's not coated and it's got a 90 degree spine on it. It's almost sharp, which is perfect for striking a ferrocium rod. So we're gonna get the knife at about a 30 degree angle here and draw down and instantly we have a flame. That feels hot. So we're gonna put the transia ring over the top here and let's go ahead and get the timer going and put on the cup. Now the wind is coming from this direction, so we're going to rotate these holes away from the wind. and a rolling boil after 11 and a half minutes. I took the water off, set it to the side, and then extinguished the flame by simply tossing on the screw cap. And this thing is quite hot. So we're gonna give this thing a few minutes to cool down, and then we're gonna come back and weigh the unit again, see how much alcohol we burned, and see how much it cost to heat this two cups of ambient temperature water to a rolling boil. Now it took about 11 and a half minutes to do so, but today, as you saw, is a pretty windy day. And the stove is now almost cool. It's still a little bit warm, but let's take off the top. You can see there's still alcohol left in there. One thing I want to point out is look at the soot. Okay, these stoves do not burn as clean as you might think. Some people think, oh, it's alcohol, it burns perfectly clean, right? Well, no, not exactly. This uh, cup of the boiling water is still a little bit hot, but I want to show you how much soot is actually on the pot. And there's actually soot on the Trangia ring. So it's not the cleanest way of cooking in the world, but it's not bad. This soot comes off very easily with soap and water or oddly enough, with a little rubbing alcohol. Go figure. Now let's take away the stove and see how much alcohol is left in there. Now, as you recall, we originally weighed this stove with the lid and the simmer ring on it. So we're gonna put those back on and weigh it so we've got apples to apples. Now remember, we were 6.7 ounces. Put that back on and we've got 5.25 ounces. So we burned 1.45 ounces of alcohol. So how much did it cost to bring two cups of water to a boil with the Trangia stove? Well, one quart or 32 ounces cost us $1.48. If you divide $1.48 by 32 ounces, you get 4.625 cents per ounce. 
Now the stove weighed 6.7 ounces when we started, weighed 5.25 ounces when we were done. That was 1.45 ounces of alcohol burn. At 4.625 cents an ounce, it costs 6.7 cents to bring two cups to a boil. Reviewing some of the advantages and disadvantages of this stove, it's relatively cheap to use. The rubbing alcohol is found virtually anywhere. The stove is very compact. It's the size of a baseball. This will fit in your hand, fit in your pocket. You can take it out hiking with you. You barely know it's there and it costs 10 to 15 bucks. Some of the negatives are you do get a little soot. Secondly, it did take 11 and a half minutes to heat that two cups of water to a rolling boil. Some pocket rockets or jet boil systems, etc., will do that in three and a half minutes. But then again, you're going to pay anywhere from $50 to $150 for stove systems like that. So, depending on your needs, this could be a five star stove or it could be a complete bust. It's really up to you. Thank you for watching today's Trangia Stove Review. Please take a moment and go and subscribe to the channel if you would. And if you like the video, go down and give it a like. If you have an idea on what you'd like us to review next, or just a comment on the video in general, please go down and leave a comment. Again, thank you for watching, and until next time, see you in the great outdoors.